Christ, our international etiquette coach. Our session today is just a brief introduction to table manners. The tools of the table are the tools of business. When you sit down at a lovely table, you of course want to know the guidelines that make dining much more comfortable and pleasant for not only yourself, but of course for others. So you wait until the host or hostess removes their napkin and sets it on their lap, indicating that the meal is about to begin. So here we have a lovely napkin, linen of course, and a beautiful uh, napkin ring. We open the napkin up and we see, based on the size, that it is a luncheon napkin, not a dinner napkin. A dinner napkin is much larger. We take the fold portion and place it at our lap. When we go to use our napkin, we're doing this and this, not this. And gentlemen, do not place your napkin into your shirt collar. What are you thinking? So let's have some fun with dining skills. When you know the guidelines, then you can enjoy your meal much more uh, at each and every event. <clears throat> Take your fingers now and put them in the shape like this. And my right hand over here is in the shape of the letter D as in drinks. This means that I know that my beverages are on the right. So this is my drinks. My left hand is in the shape of the letter B as in bread and my bread will be on my left hand side. So as you look at this that will be my right hand side. And then we read the cutlery knowing that whatever is on the outside, both right and left of us, is what we're going to use first. So this spoon is indicating that I'm going to have a bowl of soup. And yes, I have a small soup bowl here. When you use your spoon, you're moving forward, never down, and you're taking your soup spoon across the plate like this, catching any tiny little drip, bringing the soup spoon up to your mouth and sipping in this fashion. Now once you've used that soup spoon, you cannot set it back down on the tablecloth. It has to go onto either the bowl, if it's balanced properly, or the plate that's underneath it. So in this case, I would use the plate that's underneath it. Now, if I've had some of my soup and I'm still not finished, I would use my napkin and then reach for one of my glasses. The glasses, again, start on the outside and work in. So this glass is indicating a champagne glass. And if it has a stem on the glass, it indicates that you are supposed to use the stem rather than holding the glass like this. So we would have a champagne glass, a white wine, or perhaps a Pinot Noir, which is a lighter red, and then a very heavy red in this type of a glass. So we have two knives at this table setting. And the knives are always facing with a sharp edge pointing in. Out would be very aggressive. Another easy guideline is the hands in today's society at the table are always seen. Years ago, the hands used to be on the lap and never seen unless you're actually using your utensils and eating. Our new guideline, based on our international world today, is, is that the hands are always seen. So the guideline is always sometimes, and never. That's right, no elbows on the table, ever. <clears throat> All right, now, when the wait staff is serving you, they're going to serve from the left and take from the right. When everyone at your dinner table is finished with the soup, they would actually take it from the right. Your role as a guest is to remain still. If you move around like this, they don't know where you're going, and the chances of a spill are dramatically increased. So they would take this away. Now because I've set my spoon on the plate below, they would bring me another plate if we were to have a salad. And in this case, we are having a salad. So for the purpose of demonstration, we will have our salad plate here. And our small fork and our knife will be used like this and this to cut once Move over and eat, never down. And never cut, 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 eat. And when you're resting, the cutlery remains in the open position, indicating to the waitstaff that you have not finished. Your goal as a guest is to make sure that you complete this course or any of the courses for your meal at approximately the same time as the other. Now, a tip would be, if it's a white tablecloth and if it's long, it indicates it's more formal than a shorter white tablecloth. 
And then, of course, we have this beautiful overlay from India that makes it even more exciting, picking up the slight gold in the china. If you have a black tablecloth, it's not as formal as a white tablecloth. And then also, if you have a colored or a patterned tablecloth, it is less formal. So we set the stage for the level of formality that we wish to have. Now, if this is my salad and I'm finished, I would put the cutlery together like this, indicating to the staff that I have finished. Then the staff would come along and take from my right and remove the dishes. For the purpose of demonstration, we'll set them over here for the moment. Now we're on to our main course, and it's more formal if it comes plated. Otherwise, it's family style, and there's many serving dishes on the, on the table. So here, we would be able to begin once the hostess picks up her cutlery and be able to enjoy the food. Do not eat all your meat first and then move on to the potatoes, but eat it one bite at a time and Add your potatoes to the back of your fork, bring it like this. Of course, chew with your mouth closed and never speak when you have food in your mouth. Resting is like this. Do not salt or add seasoning to your dinner until you've actually tasted it. If you have tasted it and feel you need some salt, the salt and pepper are a couple and they go around the table together. So the salt usually is the one with the most holes in the top of the shaker. I like to shake it onto my hand like this and then apply it to my food. Now if someone asks for this, salt and pepper, I would pass it to them like this. And then I would begin to eat again. With only the appropriate conversation dinner uh, interaction, such as social things, family things, recent vacations, art, theater, culture, but nothing too controversial. My bread is on the left. Do not pick up the entire piece of bread and butter it. Break it into one or two bite-sized pieces, butter that, and then bring that bread to your mouth. No dilly-dallying around here with the bread up in the air like this or your elbows on the table. Let's do it gracefully, bread in the mouth, fingers back down, and then another bite. No clinking of the glasses for social events or at weddings, very rude. And you don't need to clink glasses with anyone else. You can just hold the glass up, look at them in the eye, and raise the glass to your other guests like this, and then have a sip. If you don't drink alcohol, that's fine, but you would want something in your glass in order to enjoy the toast. So it could be a sparkling water or a peri or something exciting like that. And then each of the glasses would be used accordingly. When you are finished this portion of the meal, the cutlery is placed in the 6-12 position or perhaps the 410. But if you place your cutlery like this, you're actually leading to a potential disaster as that could easily fall off when the wait staff takes your plate. One of the things I also would like to demonstrate today is the cup and saucer. I see so many people not using it effectively. So this is what I see frequently in my international teaching. Perhaps this could have been you or your friend. They'll take the sugar like this and they'll do da -da -da -da, and then rip it open and then scrub it all up and set it down. What are they thinking? So instead, the very quiet tear, gently put in there the tissue or trash on the saucer and it's a very gentle stirring like this rather than clink, clink, clink or licking that spoon. When you raise the cup to your mouth, the saucer stays on the table and you bring the cup up like this. You don't go down and you don't blow it if it's too hot. These are just a few easy guidelines, of course. A proper etiquette lesson takes three or four hours and I could be in your city teaching etiquette someday soon. I work all over the world and it's my great pleasure to share with you my 25 years of experience and being the author of nine books, you can easily gain access to my material, but most of all, enhance your power, communication, and charismatic factor through proper dining. So place that napkin down and be ready for fine dining in your near future.